Well, good morning. Today is Sunday, April the 3rd. Time is here in Cyprus, it's five past seven. So I guess in England, it'd be like five past five. You're two hours behind us. Uh, in India, you're three hours in front. So it'd be five past 10. Uh, but we're here now and um, I wanted to share a video uh, just to so that you let know not every not every morning in Cyprus is uh, like a really um, you know a wonderful beautiful sunrise. We have some clouds today, but uh, anyway, let's get on with it. I wanted to look at the scriptures. I, I've been thinking. Well, yeah, kind of. I woke up yesterday morning, and uh, and it was dark when I woke up, and I looked outside, saw the stars, and. It's like God clearly spoke to him and he said, Peter, he said, uh, you've lost that childlike faith. And I thought, what do you mean? And, and he reminded me when I first came to Cyprus, which is a few years ago, uh, obviously where I live in England, there's a lot of light and, and you don't see, well, I don't see the stars as, as I'd really love to see. We'll probably see a sunrise during this uh, message, by the way. Anyway, I'd go out at night and while I'm in Cyprus, you know, I'd go out at night, get a cup of tea and just sit there. I'd even lie on the sunbed and I'd just gaze at the stars and I'd marvel and I'd look for the shooting stars. I was like a little kid, loved it. Like a little child, small child. And I really sense that God has, um, he's uh, reminded me, Peter, you need to be like a little child. You need to find your childlike faith again. Uh, and I get it, I understand it. You know, I, I, I speak at church and uh, I take communion, I pray, I work hard, etc., etc. all these things. And I thank God for everything. It's so important. To have a thankful heart is amazingly important. So God said, I want you to do a video today. So actually, if we get to the end, uh, well, we will get to the end, but I'm sat on a ledge. <laughs> it's not as bad as it might be, but I need to be careful, all right? Because if I go that way, <laughs> I'll end up going that way. <laughs> in an ambulance. If I go that way, I'm okay, but the chances are I'm, I'm leaning this way. Not to let that worry you. Don't be worried about that. I'm, I'm safe. I believe God will <laughs> keep me safe. And I'm not testing God either, you know. Jesus says, don't test God. Don't test God. Well, God, if you're really there, you'll save me from falling down this rock. No, nothing like that. A lot of people do that. Faith, small as a, like a small child, Jesus said. Matthew 17. In Matthew 17, it starts with one of my favourite stories. And I have loads of favourite stories. So I'll say this time and time again. I have loads of favourite stories. But in this story, Matthew 17, from verse 1, it says, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and he led them up a high mountain by themselves. And there he transfigured. He changed. His appearance changed. It uses the word transfigured, but it means he just changed. It was like a shapeshifter, you could say. Uh, it changed completely. And he said his face shone. The Bible says shone like the sun. I mean, we, we, we'll see a little bit of the sun coming up, but his face shone like the sun. And his claws became as white as the light. And he said, and then appeared before him Moses and Elijah. And they were talking to Jesus and the, the disciples, Peter, James and John. Uh, they must have been thinking, oh my goodness, what's happening? What's happening? So they were talking and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's great that we're here. Let us, let us put three shelters up, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. <laughs> and while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. A bright cloud covered them and a voice from the cloud said, this is my son in whom I love, whom I love. And with him I am well pleased. This is my son who I love so much with him. I'm well pleased. This is God speaking. Listen to him. You see, God is revealing his presence in creation and in nature, as I've been showing you. And today we'll see this amazing presence of God. And, and we, we miss it. And I don't want to miss it today. And I want you to think also, if you're watching this video, take a look around. Look for the fingerprints of God. <laughs> it's interesting. I remember when our girls were little, you know, and uh, we had patio windows, glass windows in our house, and I'd clean them and polish them. And, of course, the girls would come down, and uh, the little ones, 
and they'd get sticky fingers, wouldn't they? And sure enough, they'd put the fingers all over the glass. You could see the fingerprints of our little girls uh, on things, you know, on the glass, on the table, and you had to clean it again. And, and we have fingerprints, but God has fingerprints and the handiwork of God. The Bible talks about the handiwork of God. And what I'm enjoying, what we see here are the handiwork of God and God has fingerprints and there's fingerprints in your life where God has touched you, where he's changed you, where he's done things in your life. You might not even believe in God. It's only because you're not looking. The Bible clearly says that if we look for God, we'll find him. James says, if you come near to God, he'll come near to you. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of people when we worship God, when we sing praises, when we lift up holy hands to God, he comes. And it's like a child. We have to become like children, believing and understanding that this is God. And he said, the disciples heard the voice and they fell face down to the ground, terrified, but Jesus came and touched them. And he said, guys, come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus touched them. Don't be afraid. Get up. And then he said, when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. You know, many of people, many of us, we can be afraid of so many things. And the fear can crush us and call us to fall face down in our lives. We're going along great and then something comes and fear comes and we collapse under the weight and we can't look and we hold our head. We're just so afraid. But Jesus wants to know, he wants to come and he wants to touch you and he wants to say, look, trust me. Jesus wants to, with the fingerprints of God in Jesus Christ, he wants to take his hand and he wants to place it on your head. And he wants to say, come on, don't be afraid, get up. And if we would just turn and look and open our eyes and if we would just see Jesus, it's all we need to see is Jesus. Then just like with these disciples, when they see Jesus, nobody except Jesus. Sometimes we just need to see Jesus in our situation. And to do that, we need a childlike faith. Said they saw nobody at Jesus. <laughs> and then they started coming down the mountain. You see, once they, once they just looked up and saw nobody except Jesus, they continued on the journey and they came down the mountain. And there's so much in that story that we can learn so much that God, you see, God's fingerprints are all over that story. God's fingerprints are all over Jesus. You want to know about God? Start to learn and read about Jesus Christ and you'll find about God. God is amazing. <coughs> Excuse me. God is amazing. And so God's saying to us, you need to rediscover your childlike faith. Rediscover it. And so further down in that same Matthew 17, and verse 22, Jesus comes to his disciples and they said they came together in Galilee and, and he said to him, he said, listen, he said, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. And it's, and it's an interesting thought at this time because we're heading towards Easter. Uh, I'll be back home for Easter. I'm excited for the service of Easter. I'm excited as, as we venture towards it. I'm excited at the build-up. I'm excited at the celebration. I'm, I'm excited... I'm never excited about considering Good Friday when Jesus was crucified and butchered and when you really think that on a cross and Jesus saying that this is what's going to happen. He said he's going to be delivered into the hands of men. And he said, and they're going to kill him. They're going to kill me, he says. Jesus said they're going to kill me. But listen, on the third day, the son of man will be raised to life. He'll come back. And I'm excited with that because all that <laughs> is wrapped up in, in the Easter story. And on the basis of that amazing miracle of the son of the living God that was nailed to a cross and then he rose from the dead wow wow but we live in a society they don't even believe in God well in my country this it seems so many people they don't believe in God they believe in everything but I believe in the God who causes the sun to rise if you listen carefully can you hear that that's the sea lapping against the rocks. I believe in the God that created the sea. I believe in God that said, let there be light. And, 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 and I believe in the God that said, let the, the land be separated from the waters. And, and I believe in that God. 
and because I'm sat on this rock and the water's there, it's because God created it. And because I'm sat on this rock and I can see the sun there, it's because God created it. So Jesus said he must be, on the third day he's going to be raised to die. But he said the disciples, they were filled with grief. And why wouldn't they be? Because they're going to kill him. They, they probably didn't hear that he'll be raised to life bit. And that's the problem with a lot of people in society, you know. They know that Jesus, they know about this, this man called Jesus. They know he was nailed to the cross. They know he was crucified all the cross. And, this, and, and they're so concerned about that that they miss the fact that he's raised to life. Hallelujah. Praise God. But they miss that. And, and to be filled with grief and not understand the resurrection power of Jesus Christ is to miss it. It's to miss the whole purpose. It's to miss your life and, and I'd miss my life. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is so important because without the resurrection, it's like on this rock, on this resurrection rock, the resurrection and God raised the rock up out of the waters and God raised the rock, Jesus Christ, out of the grave. But we don't get there yet. That's just to come. And then Jesus comes and he's talking about the temple tax in verse 24. And I love this because you've got to look at the child likeness, the child likeness in this story. Okay. Remember Peter, he was a fisherman, a great fisherman, went out on the seas, came back with catch after catch, came back with fish, particularly, well, not every night, some nights he was out all night. And then Jesus said, throw your nets in the other side. And when he did, he caught fish. And when Jesus, when Peter recognized that and he saw that, he fell on his knees and fell on his face. And he said, who are you, Lord? Go away from me. I am a sinner. You see, when we look Jesus in the face, when we look up and we see Jesus, the power of who Jesus is and the preciousness and the love that Jesus has for each one of us, then we, we recognize our own sinfulness. We recognize our own weaknesses. But Jesus said, don't look at your sin. Don't look at your weakness because that'll make you hide your face. You'll cower down. He said, Open your eyes and only see Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so glad for that day when I opened my eyes and I only saw Jesus. And you can do the same today. You can look just like those disciples did on the mountain, just like I explained. Whatever you're going through, whatever's crushing you, whatever's causing you to anger or fear or shame or anxiety, whatever it is in life, <laughs> Jesus said, hey, come on, look at me. Look at me look at me and Jesus wants us to look at him anyway back to our story so Peter's a fisherman okay so we drop down into verse 24 and it says Jesus and his disciples he arrived in Capernaum and when they went into a Capernaum and into the temple they had to pay a tax two drachma tax each two drachmas each two for Jesus two for Peter and so the temple uh, guides the people on the thing hey doesn't your teacher pay the taxes doesn't your teacher pay taxes well, imagine Peter, what's Peter going to say? What's Peter going to say? <laughs> yes, he does, Peter said. Yes, he does pay taxes. And then it says Peter came into the house. And Jesus was the first to speak. <laughs> what do you think? Simon, what do you think? He asked. Who do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes from? Who do they collect them? From their own children or from others. So imagine, you know, the kings of the earth and they've got children themselves and they collect taxes from the people, the poor people. Heck, we all know what it's like to pay taxes. But we also know that there's people in higher powers that probably don't pay the tax. Anyway, that's what Jesus is getting at here. Saying, he's saying, who do they collect taxes from? From their own children or from other children. <laughs> Peter said straight away, from other children. <laughs> so Jesus said, yes, yeah, so then their children, so then the children are exempt, Jesus said to him. What's he saying here? What is Jesus saying here? <laughs> but then Jesus goes on verse 27, but so that we may not cause offense, now go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish, that you catch and open its mouth, the first fish, open its mouth. <laughs> and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax. 
and yours. Just imagine that, this is Peter the fisherman. <laughs> He's caught many, many fish in his life. And Jesus tells him to go and catch a fish. And the first fish you catch, open its mouth and there's a four drachma coin in it. This is a taxes. What's all that about? What's all that about? I mean, the faith of the man Peter to go, to go and, 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 and to and to catch a fish. What's an interesting thing as well is, <laughs> it says Peter came to the house and Jesus was the first to speak and then Jesus calls him Simon. He says, Simon, he asks, from whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes from their own children or from others? From others, Peter said, then the children are exempt. The children are exempt. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the Son of God came to earth. And God, the people are paying taxes to the temple. And the money to go to the temple is going to God. And what Jesus is pointing out here is that he is the Son of God. He is a child and so he doesn't need to pay taxes. But in order that he won't cause offence, go and get a Ford Drake McCoy out of a fish's mouth. I mean, that in itself is an amazing miracle. I mean, what would Peter's face? Imagine if you were Peter, Simon Peter. Imagine if you were him and you opened that mouth of the first fish and there's the Ford Wright McCoy. Oh my goodness, imagine that. Imagine how you would feel. Can you see? And God's like that. He's, he's a fun God. He's an amazing God. He's a loving God, a caring God. He wants to do life with us. He wants to do life with us. He said, take it out and pay for my tax and for your tax. Jesus is pointing out that he is the son of the living God. In the Mount of Transfiguration earlier, we talked about it. Jesus, the voice from the cloud, the bright cloud, the voice said, this is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. God is underlining the fact time and time again that Jesus is the son of God, the son of God. It doesn't end there because I want us to go on to chapter 70, 18 of, the, uh, of Matthew. And in the first verse it says, At that time the disciples came to Jesus. And they said to Jesus, Jesus, they said, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest? Now what they're talking about, are they talking about who is, who is the greatest? Are they talking about who is, the, who is the boss sort of thing? Who is the boss man? Are they talking about who is the greatest? Who does the greatest miracles? Who prays the best? Who preaches the best? Who worships the best? Who sings the best? In the kingdom of heaven, who is the greatest? <laughs> Said Jesus brought to them. He called a little child to him and he placed the child amongst them in the middle, put the child in the middle and he said, truly I tell you, unless you change, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That we can come, we can become like little children. I think Peter became like a little child when he went fishing for that one fish and got the four drachma coin. I think Peter, James and John who went up the mountain were like little children out on an outing with Jesus, going for a walk up the mountain. God wants to do life with us. Yeah, church is wonderful and to go to church and I'm all for going to church because when we go to church and we gather together and we worship Jesus and we praise Jesus and we pray together and we encourage each other. And as I've already said, when we come near to God, he comes near to us. And sometimes we need to gather with other people to come near to God. And, and that's a great thing. But going with a heart to know that we're gonna meet with God is so, so, so important. Unless you become like children, you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. It says, therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When you come like a little child, you recognize, number one, who your dad is. Especially if you're a child in the kingdom of heaven and you recognize that Jesus is the son of God and you acknowledge that Jesus and you believe that he's the son of God, then by doing that, you're accepting and receiving and acknowledging that God does exist.
that God is the creator of all that we see, that God is our God, he is our Father in heaven. That's why Jesus said when you pray, you pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, that we can come and that the, that the living God can live through you and through me. And when we come like little children, with a childlike faith, God can do amazing miracles. God can do amazing things. I wanted to come this morning and God said, I want you to sit here and I want you to do this. And it took me a little while to set the camera up. Uh, but to get this message across that we must become like children, be adventurous. Don't try and have all the answers. Children don't have all the answers. They just live it, they breeze it, they go through life, the fun, they play. One moment they're sad, the next minute they've overcome that and they're doing something else in the great. Sometimes they're fighting in anger and they do get frustrated and they do get, well, we're all like little children. But they don't live there. They don't live in the pit of despair. They don't live in the tomb of grief and anxiety and fear and, and sadness and depression and guilt and mourning. They don't live there. You know, when a loved one passes away, there's a deep sadness. But we don't live there because God has got something greater and better and more wonderful for me and for you. And I want to encourage you today to come before God. And it might be that you've got a little bit like me, like in Cyprus. You know, I've said it before, I think, when the extraordinary when the amazing things, the awe and wonder of life becomes just life, becomes just ordinary. We miss it. And we need to come in the kingdom of God. Now I just want to tell you that this video is 22 minutes long. And the last video took such a while, but no, I was going to pause it there. Uh, you could pause it at any stage and come back to this video because we're going to go to something else now. Because Jesus wants us to return. Jesus wants us to, to recognize that sometimes we've lost our way. We started off well. <laughs> Apostle Paul says, I think it's in Galatians, in Galatians, I think he said, you, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you? Who was that? What stopped you from obeying the truth? What stopped you from fulfilling the purposes that God has for your life? What stopped you from living this amazing life? What was it that did that? I want us to look at another passage. Uh, we find it, Revelation. Revelation, and a lot of people, they kind of avoid Revelation, and I'm not really sure why. I'm not really sure why they do that. Be quiet, you. <laughs> Couple of birds flying overhead. They avoid... <laughs> I wonder if God was speaking through that. <laughs> and anyway, they avoid revelation. God speaks through everything. He said this. A revelation from Jesus Christ. This is, uh, this is uh, where Jesus appeared to John. And John, who had been... Uh, He'd been uh, put away on an island, imprisoned on an island, and God came to him and told him to write these things down. And it, and it, it starts Revelation 1, the revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. So God the Father gave Jesus the revelation of what's going to happen, what's going to come, where, where we go from here. Uh, and, and he came to John. Jesus has he's gone through the cross. He's... he's He's gone through death, he's been raised from life and he's gone up to heaven and his disciples now are carrying on in this uh, amazing life. And it's quite interesting now, we're getting more of a picture of the sunrise because it is the son of the living God who rises within our lives and with our thinking. Anyway, John, he said he came and he said he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. So Jesus sent his angel to John and John testified. He wrote everything down. That, that this is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And he said, blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written because the time is near. <clears throat> blessed is the one. So we're blessed today just by reading this. 
He said, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. Jesus raised from the dead. He was the first one, the first one and the ruler of the king's of the earth and he said to him who loves us Jesus loved us and to him who's freed us from our sin by his blood by the crucifixion this is good stuff this is our God and he said and he has made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and father to him be glory and power forever and ever amen wow they not that amazing and they said look he's going to come with on the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him, even those who put him to death, every eye will see him. Every eye. And all the peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. And in verse 8 of Revelation 1, he says, Jesus said, I am the Alpha, the first, and the Omega, the last. That's relating to the, the alphabet. Alpha being the first letter. Omega being the last. I am the first. And the last says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the almighty God, hallelujah, this is, ooh, shakara pasita sadanda, how can you not get excited when, you, when you're doing this, oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, this is amazing, and he goes on, he says, uh, I turned, he said, and, and Jesus telling him uh, uh, all these things, you know, I talked about the island, it was this, I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos, you see, because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. He was on the island of Patmos because he proclaimed the testimony of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He can't proclaim the word of God. He said that there is a God. He's, and our God's amazing. And so John was uh, exiled to the island of Patmos. And, and Jesus... He sees everything and he sent his angels to go and speak to John. Because I would think while John was there, he worshipped his God. He praised his God. He honoured his God. He was like a little child was John on that island. He never forgot. He worshipped and praised and... Yeah, he, he connected with God. And you and I can also connect with this amazing God. And so uh, John came... Uh, not John, Jesus sent the angel. And it says in verse 17, he said, when, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. When I saw who? Well, when he saw the angel, listen, this is the angel. He said, I turned round to see the voice was speaking to me. And I turned and I saw seven golden lampstands. And there was someone like the son of man dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. His voice was like the sound of rushing waters. And in his right hand, he held seven stars. And coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining. Remember the transfiguration? The sun shining in all its br brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. <laughs> then he placed his right hand. It's a similar thing of what happened on the mountain of transfiguration. He fell as if he was dead and Jesus placed his right hand on me and he said don't be afraid I am the first and the last I am the living one I was dead and look now I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades this is our God this is why we believe in Jesus Christ wow I must admit I never expect I never expected we were going to go here today thank you father God and he said don't be afraid don't be afraid and he tells him write down what you've seen and how, what is now and what's going to take place. And so he's writing these down. And then as he's writing, he said, listen, I want you to write this to the Ephesus church. And he said, these are the words of him. And he's telling, this is what he told me. He said, Jesus said to him, write these down, John, and tell the church in Ephesus. And the church in Ephesus was a great church. And there was an established church and they worshipped Jesus and they found Jesus. But look, he said, I know your deeds, I know your hard work and I know your perseverance. You persevere through trials, through difficulties and you keep going and you keep going. And I know you can't tolerate wicked people. I know that. I know all that. You cannot tolerate wicked people. And I know that you've tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. And you've preserved, uh, sorry, you've persevered and you've endured hardships for my name. And you haven't grown weary. I know all that. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had 
at first and it goes right back to the beginning of this video when i said to you jesus said to you peter you forgot something you've forsaken that you've that first when you looked at those stars and you thought wow look at the stars and you looked for the shooting star and you got excited and i did <laughs> let me tell you dear friends brothers and sisters in christ men and women who are going to be brothers and sisters in christ if you're watching this I don't even go outside at night now to look at the stars. I've lost it. And this was the same situation with the Ephesus church. The people, they've lost the passion. They've lost the awe. They've lost the wonder. Yes, they worship him. Yes, they believe. Yes, they persevere. Yeah, they do all that. But they've lost something. And I want to be a man of God, a man of faith that tells you, let's not lose the wonder of it all. Oh, hallelujah. I love God, don't you? I so love God. I so love the passion. I so love the presence. I so love the fact that God sent his son, Jesus Christ. And he said, you forget, consider how far you've fallen. And this is what, yeah, but what do we do, Jesus? We've fallen and Jesus gives them the answer. He says, listen, you need to repent and you need to do the things at first. And my, for me, in my situation, Father God, I'm sorry. I'm repenting, saying I'm sorry. I'm doing the things, that, so tonight I want to tell you something that tonight I'm going to just go outside and I'm going to sit and I'm going to look at the stars and I'm going to say, wow, Father, wow. And maybe you need to rediscover the wow factor, the X factor in choosing Jesus Christ, the passion that there is in Jesus Christ. You know, on the X factor, the program, the X factor, they, they are different contestants and they? they were looking for the one. They were looking for the one who had that real get up and go, who had that passion, that fighting spirit to push forward, to go deeper, to become stronger, to not let anything stand in the way, to train, to trust, to believe for, for the better things. And I believe that God is looking for the X factor. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro throughout the earth looking for someone who would love him. Could that be you? Could that be you? Could that be me? Oh, Lord, that you would use me for your glory and your power in the name of Jesus. That would be my prayer. There's an X factor. There's a power. Have you lost your first love? Have you lost it? Uh, have you lost it? He said, repent and do the things you did it at first. If you don't repent, I will come to you and I will remove the lampstand from its place. If you don't repent, what does the lampstand represent? The lampstand represents the light, the light of the God, the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Come, represent, let Jesus open your eyes and see Jesus. <laughs> open your eyes and see Jesus. Hallelujah. He did go on to say in verse 6, that, but you do have this in your favour. You hate the practice of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You do hate the sinfulness of others. You still hate. The good thing is, you still hate it because what he says, he said, he said here, I know that you cannot tolerate the wicked people. You can't tolerate wicked people. In, that, that, in other words, you, you say to wicked people, listen, you need to stop doing that. You need to change. Is there something in your life? Is there something in my life that I need to change? Is there something? Find your first love. Get reconnected to Jesus. He is the Son of God. I want to finish that because it's 34 minutes long and I know these videos are hard and I don't want to feel like I'm boring you, but on the finish at the end, if you manage to get to the end, I'm going to pick my camera up now and uh, let me just get this. And I'm just going to show you there we go. This is where we are. And this is, uh, I'm going to show you now. This is, <laughs> can you see that down there? This is me here. And then, there, of course, of course it's me. Sorry. And then look, can you see down there? You see? I'm looking all around. Turkey straight across there. You see? And it would be wrong, wouldn't it? to not finish on the one that's all about.
central to everything that we do. We've got the, the sun. Who represents the son of the living God? Father, I want to thank you for the son. I want to thank you for your son. Father, I pray that whoever listens to this video, and if they lasted to the end, that they would open up their hands, holy hands, and they would say, Lord God, would you refresh me? Would you encourage me? Would you strengthen me? Or would you help me to know the truth of the living God? That's the best place to end this video with the sun in the center. May God bless you today and encourage you in everything that you do. Amen.